So I, I often get asked about supercapacitor and battery materials. Will I supply them um, as ready-made materials so people can build their own stuff without having go, to go in the basic background of making those materials themselves? Now, for a long time, of course, it's quite onerous for us, so we've said no, because um, really to make materials for other people takes an awful lot of time and a lot of effort, uh, and we've been using them a lot in our own researches, and it hasn't really been appropriate. But we came across this stuff. Uh, this is an activated carbon felt. Now, it's got quite a large surface area. It's about 1,800 uh, square metres per cubic centimetre, so pretty big surface area. But it is just an activated carbon. There's nothing else in there. And what that means is we can do stuff with this that makes everything that much quicker. So it's really quite easy to make a supercapacitor with a dry material like that. All we actually have to do is take our bit of material, cut a couple of squares for it. I mean, it just really doesn't get any easier than this. And we get our anode and cathode for our supercapacitor. Now all we have to do is make a current collector, and for that we use good old graph oil. And under here I've got one that I've actually just put on charge just before starting the video, and I'll recharge it again. And what I've done there is the graph oil current collector, a little bit of material you just saw, a separator that is in fact just a piece of tissue paper, another one, and another graph oil. And we just put those on top of each other, and you'll notice it wet, and you'll also notice that I'm sticking my fingers in there. And the reason I'm sticking my fingers in there is because that electrolyte is nothing more than ordinary table salt. I just took some of this stuff, oops, some of this stuff, stuck it in some water, and that's the electrolyte that's on that capacitor. Now it's been on charge for a little bit, and it's got enough charge, really, to spin that motor there for maybe two or three minutes. And if I connect that motor up, so I disconnect my charge point, so all we've got is a negative going there, and we connect up the positive, and there we go, there's that little motor spinning, and that will spin for a considerable amount of time. You're just not going to get easier or safer than that. You take that material, pure carbon material, use the graph roll of pure carbon material, put a bit of salt water on it, and you get actually quite an awesome result. This obviously charges at 1.2 volts because it's normal table salt, but it stores an enormous amount of energy. Actually, I did these tests earlier, obviously, and what we're getting from there is about six farads per gram. Six farads per gram is not far off that. That is a commercial supercapacitor. It's 500 farads with 62 grams, so it's just over eight farads per gram, as they're declaring. And we're getting just over six farads per gram, just from table salt and the activated carbon felt. So, kind of impressive results. Now, the point of this is that people can have the accessibility now to the baseline material so they can make these things either safely and simply, so maybe in a classroom, maybe children who want to do it, maybe you just want to have a go yourself and see how it goes, but you can make it really, really easily and really, really safely with salt water and carbon and a pair of scissors. So really easy to do, really safe. But it does also mean that you can explore things a little bit. And there's this carbon felt, which incidentally is uh, on sale in our shop and it's 14 centimetres by 14 centimetres. There's a link in the description and I'll, pop, I'll just put that in there if you want to go to the shop and look at it. Um, it's a basic carbon. So we can do other things to it. We could, for instance, nitrogen dope it. And if we want to nitrogen dope it, all you really do is soak it in some urea or some thiourea and cook it a few hundred degrees centigrade for half an hour or so and you get nitrogen doping. Or you could pop it in some nitric acid and boil it for half an hour or so and you'll get nitrogen doping. Or you could pop it in some potassium permanganate and boil it for half an hour or so and you will get nano decoration of manganese dioxide across the surface of your carbon. There's an awful lot of things you could actually do to the carbon in order to prove the, uh, improve the carbon's response. But perhaps the simplest thing you can do is just to change the electrolyte. I mean, we're using ordinary table salt at 1.2 volts and getting a good result. But you can use a sodium sulfate, which is a fairly standard electrolyte in the literature. It tends to run at 1.6 volts. And if you use sodium sulfate, actually, the um, capacitance of that goes up to 12.5 farads per gram. So that's actually exceeding this just by using a different electrolyte. Now, in the world of capacitor research, I have a hero, really. Somebody I look up to and somebody I admire for the work that he does because he... he seems to have the same thrust that I do, and that is, you know, how to do this thing cheaply, easily, quickly, safely. Uh, and his name is uh, Dr. Kainer. And Dr. Kainer really um, 
has come up with some very interesting approaches to supercapacitor manufacture. Now, this is one of his. This is an electrolyte based on sodium sulfate. And he's put a redox additive in there, which is a um, potassium uh, hexacyanoferrate, potassium hexacyanobarite redox couple. And if we use something like that, then we can bang that up to 16.25 farads a gram. Now, that's knocky socks off stuff for supercapacitors. It really is very, very impressive. So we can look at changing the salts. We can look at adding additives to it. Now, here's uh, just some lithium sulfate. And if we use lithium sulfate, then we're going to get about, uh, let's have a see, what will that be? It's going to, again going to be about 12, 12 and a half farads a gram, just for changing the salt. Adding a uh, redox uh, additive to it will have a better impact. Doing something like modifying the surface of the carbon, again, can give you a better device. So it's really, really easy to use, both for building your own devices, if you want to build large devices, or if you want to do a demonstration of an ultra-safe, ultra-cheap capacitor, then that's a really good way to go around it. So I've kind of changed your mind from supplying these baseline carbon materials for supercapacitor construction from the no to the yes. And, and it's available on the store, and the store link is in the description. We obviously made a big one, and we're about to try that big one and see what happens. This has run out, so let's put that back on charge. And like all supercapacitors, it, it does have quite a draw, and it charges quite quickly. So that little device, which is 2.5 centimetres by 2.5 centimetres, and it weighs 0.4 of a gram, is drawing uh, 400 milliamps when I first connect it, and then obviously it goes down uh, quite quickly, as you would expect a supercapacitor, and in only a few seconds we should get some more power out of that. And there we go, we're spinning the motor again. So, I put that little thing together to try and help folk to move into doing this, to be able to demonstrate this and to give this a go. So, I hope it was of interest to you, and thank you very much for watching.